All right, class, so we're going to be doing an assembly, a simple assembly using the example blocks that we 3D modeled. If you need any help with 3D modeling the block, I did post my own example block um, that you can download and use to create an assembly. So you can create an assembly by on the home page, either clicking the assembly button or going to new and then selecting a standard.iam. We're not going to be using the weldment.iam, but IAM is the extension for an assembly. And we're going to be doing it in English units, which is default. Um, so we're going to create a new assembly. The way you start is by clicking on the place button. And clicking the place button uh, means let me place my parts. If you have multiple parts, you can actually select multiple at one time. For this build, we're only going to be doing one block and they're going to be the same throughout. But let's say you created like five different colored blocks. You can select all five and bring them in. But I'm going to bring in one green block. We'll see it show up. If I click once, it means that I'm bringing in the part once. If I zoom out, you'll see it still shows the kind of shadow or the ghost figure of it. Um, I could click it as many times as I want. Uh, sure, how many is that? Five, we'll go with that. So for now, we're I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click okay. I actually brought in six, so if I ever wanted to delete one, I could always right click and delete it if I brought one too many. So we're gonna be doing uh, just the simple assembly um, and we're only gonna be using two constraints. Um, they're going to be the mate constraint and the flush constraint. There are other constraints, which you'll notice here. There's the angle constraint, there's a tangent constraint, there's an insert constraint, and a symmetry constraint. Um, but we're only going to be using this first button. If you overview, if you look, click on this, it says mate. If you put your mouse over this, it says flush. We're going to be using these two for this. Okay. Later on, we'll be doing other ones. So first steps is to ground one object. That means to remove all the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedoms is the six ways that the object can move. So if I want to actually view the degrees of freedom, I could go to the view tab and click degrees of freedom. You'll notice that this shows three arrows for the XYZ translational movement, as well as three rotational movements in the XYZ. So those are your six degrees of freedom. This one, I removed all of them by grounding this part one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, an assembly. So I'm going to use the constraint and I'm going to mate. You see two options. So because this one's uh, able to move, I'm going to mate this face with the top of this plane and I'm going to apply it. At this point, some people will say, well, that didn't do anything. I can still move it, but that's not quite true. You'll notice that the degrees of freedom actually got removed. And if I go to the side, You'll notice that I can't move it up and down. I can slide it left and right. I can slide it, you know, back and forth, I guess. But what I can't do is slide it up and down because that degree of freedom is removed. Same with rotation. I'm not going to do it, but you'll notice that I can't rotate it except in one direction about the Y without um, messing this constraint. So now I'm going to flush it, which means the two planes are going to be side by side. So you'll notice that a little arrow comes up. I'm going to flush this face with this face, which means these two planes are parallel to each other. They're in line. I'm going to apply it. Now my last flush is of those two faces. I apply it. And now you'll notice all degrees of freedom are removed. If I try to pull this block up, I move left, right. I can't. You'll notice it tells me you can't move this part. I can do this quickly, you know, one more time just to demo it. So I'm going to mate this top face with uh, we'll say this bottom face, apply, I'll flush this with this, apply, I'll flush this with this face, apply. I'll go ahead and make the letter C. Um, so what I'm going to do, one more time, I'm going to mate this face with this face, apply, flush this face with this face, and then lastly, Oh, I don't think I did that right. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I made it the faces. Whoops. So if you ever make a mistake, and there it was, I'm going to delete that. Didn't mean to make that mistake. Good. So I must have made it instead of flush. So I'm going to flush this face with this face. Good. Now I'm going to flush this face with this, not that face. This face with... Secondly is that face. There we go. I can apply that. And then last one. Apply. 
flesh, those two faces, and lastly, flush these two faces. Great. So how do I know that I did it correctly? Well, first of all, the way I built this was that this peg was uh, the same size. They're actually a little uh, smaller than the opening on the bottom. But I purposely modeled it so that this peg was bigger than this side piece of so the ones that were on the left and right of the block. So I'm going to analyze interference. That means that what I'm doing is I want to see how these parts crash into each other, whether they do or they don't. Do they interfere with each other? You'll notice that on this face, they don't crash at all. They're all lined up. But when I connected the side pieces, right there, that small little volume, it's actually 1.6666 times 10 to the negative fourth inches cubed of volume crashes into each other. That means that those parts are interfering. I expected that. Okay. I can also confirm that I did it correctly by going back to view. My degrees of freedom are on. And no part has a degree of freedom. This part doesn't move. I've done it correctly. You could do any shape with this. You could build as big as you want. But this is our first step in creating assemblies. All right. So using the maiden flush. Hope you enjoyed. If you have questions, make sure to ask.